To have any hope of finding intelligent alien life, we have to know exactly what to look for, whether it's dumb life or intelligent life. But where do we begin? How can we find a way to narrow down the nearly infinite possibilities? The search for intelligent life is not just a matter of scientific curiosity, it is driven by a strong desire to connect with something greater. Finding evidence of an extraterrestrial civilization would not only show that we are not alone, but it would also open up a new chapter in human evolution. What do they know that we don't? And how do we make contact? In the early 80s, Franz von Grutheisen believed he saw a big city and evidence of agriculture on the moon. He also believed that he saw evidence of life on Venus, and he postulated that it was caused by a great fire festival put on by the inhabitants to celebrate their new emperor. Later he revised his position, stating that the Venusians could be burning their rainforest to make more farmland. After numerous missions and studies, it has been confirmed that there is no evidence of any kind of life on these celestial bodies. Years ago, humanity first began broadcasting radio and television signals with enough power that they should leave Earth's atmosphere and progress deep into interstellar space. If someone living in a distant star system were keeping a vigilant eye out for these signals, they would not only be able to pick them up but immediately identify them as created by an intelligent species. With new studies from scientists, we now know there are trillions of planets that are habitable in the known universe. And thanks to the SETI Institute, we have now scanned tens of millions of stars for signals. There are still trillions of galaxies that are too far away for practical study. But after all these years of searching the vastness of the universe, despite all memorably loud claims and series of false alarms, nothing. We call it the Great Silence. However, the fact that we haven't met with success just yet should in no way discourage us from continuing to search for life. In reality, the search for intelligent life has barely begun. Life, including intelligent life, evolved on Earth. Yet there shouldn't be anything particularly remarkable or special about our planet, it's just another random world in the galaxy. So if intelligent life happened here, it must be pretty common, common enough that we should be seeing signs of alien civilizations all over the place. Nature has a way of playing by its own rules, and in the search for alien life, this means that we have to be prepared for anything. There are countless possibilities, and it can be difficult to know where to begin. However, by exploring the conditions that are necessary for life to exist, we can narrow down our search and increase our chances of finding something truly remarkable. Scientists usually assume alien life will use familiar terrestrial biochemistry and therefore hope to find alien life by searching near water or by supplying hydrocarbons. The assumption that alien life is likely to be based on carbon and water is traditional and plausible. For example, instead of relying on the water as the solvent in which biological molecules operate, perhaps aliens might depend on ammonia or methane. And also, what if intelligent life isn't based on carbon, but rather, based on silicon? Carbon and silicon are chemically very similar, both of them can form bonds with up to four other atoms simultaneously. Moreover, silicon is one of the most common elements in the universe. For example, silicon makes up almost 30% of the mass of the Earth's crust and is roughly 150 times more abundant than carbon in the Earth's crust. Additionally, there are examples on Earth of organisms using silicon in biological structures, specifically in a form of algae known as diatoms. They are responsible for the usage of over 6 billion metric tons of silicon each year in Earth's oceans, as well as the production of almost 20% of the planet's oxygen. As a result, it is likely that silicon might exist as a stage of early life on other planets, converting their atmospheres into oxygen and getting them ready for more advanced life later on. Silicon-based life forms might thrive in environments that are too extreme for carbon-based life forms, such as high-temperature or high-pressure environments. For example, silicon is more thermally stable than carbon and can withstand higher temperatures, so a silicon-based organism might be able to survive in a hot, volcanic environment where carbon-based life could not. Silicon-based life forms would have to use more energy to maintain their metabolic processes and are less able to quickly respond to changes in their environment. Despite the many uses silicon has for biology on Earth, the chances of it being the major building block for life here or elsewhere seem to be low. 
There are also scientists who believe that life could be based on non-carbon and non-silicon elements altogether, using elements such as sulfur or phosphorus in their biological processes. In these hypothetical scenarios, life would have very different chemical and physical properties compared to life on Earth, and would likely require completely different conditions to thrive. It is presumptuous to assume that we are worthy of special attention from advanced species in the universe. We may be a phenomenon as uninteresting to them as ants are to us. But there might still be a way of finding them. Instead of waiting for them to communicate, we should search for their infrastructures like giant machines, which are likely to be detectable by their waste heat in the mid-infrared. In 2015, astronomers observed this star as it started to dim in erratic ways. It occasionally dims by as much as 20%, suggesting that there is some material in orbit around this star that blocks its light. The dimming could be due to some kind of alien megastructure surrounding the star, something like an energy-absorbing Dyson sphere, perhaps that was built up around it, intermittently obstructing its light from reaching us. Another possible way is to look for neutrinos, a type of subatomic particle that is produced by the decay of radioactive elements and interacts with matter very weakly. This allows them to pass through solid matter and also makes them very difficult to detect. Finding neutrinos here on Earth is difficult. We've got an incredible amount of neutrinos streaming towards us from the sun. In fact, you've got billions of neutrinos passing through your body every second and you never feel them because never interact. It takes a huge amount of water, protected underground from other forms of radiation, and a suite of sensitive detectors. And even then, they only turn up a handful of neutrinos a year. Another possibility is searching for evidence of communications that rely on gravitational waves. It was predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. The first detection of these mysterious waves was first made in 2016. And in the coming years and decades, it is expected that gravitational wave observatories will be established so the presence of these ripples in space-time can be visualized. However, generating detectable gravitational waves is much more energy-consuming than neutrinos. They are extremely difficult to generate at a detectable level. You would need abilities similar to those of superheroes, and be able to smash neutron stars and black holes together at will. However, even though most of these explanations seems unlikely, it hints at a new way of searching for intelligent life. Ever since Frank Drake proposed his famous equation, human beings have eagerly sought to find evidence of intelligent life. Unfortunately, all of our efforts have been haunted by Femi's equal a famous paradox. But of course, as space exploration goes, we've really only begun to scratch the surface of our universe. And the only way we can ever expect to find evidence of intelligent life out there is to keep looking. And with greater knowledge and increasingly sophisticated methods at our disposal, we can be sure that if intelligent life is out there somewhere, we will find it eventually. Still, we can't help but wonder if our signals will ever be received by someone or something out there or if they will just shoot forever through the cold, dark void of space. Space is big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. When you're attempting to communicate across vast distances of space, you need huge amounts of energy. Just look at a star, even though it's generating an incomprehensible amount of energy every second, the brightness drops dramatically with distance. Any ancient extraterrestrial civilization, millions of years older than humanity, would need enormous amounts of energy. By creating a swarm of satellites in a spherical shell, they could harness much of the power of their star. Life might even turn up in our own neighborhood, beneath the Martian surface, perhaps, or in the dark, subsurface oceans of Jupiter's moon, Europa. Or maybe the dream of the ages will come true, and we'll eavesdrop on the communications of extraterrestrial civilizations. We might even capture evidence of techno-signatures. Barring these strokes of luck, however, the job will be much harder. Two possibilities exist, either we are alone in the universe or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. 